how many of you have seen the film Hidden Figures? <laughs> so for those of you who have not, Hidden Figures brought to life the incredible story of three brilliant African-American women at NASA. Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson. These women were the brains behind one of the greatest operations in American history, the launch of astronaut John Glenn into orbit, which was a turning point in the space race. This film was the epitome of my image of STEM project, which was all about leveraging the power of storytelling to help promote social change and promote diversity in the STEM workforce. So, <laughs> As a culminating event for my tenure in the Obama White House, I co-organized a screening of Hidden Figures in December of 2016. This was a historic occasion. We were hosting a White House screening of a film about the previously obscured contributions of black women at NASA while the first black president was still in office and his black girl magic first lady was giving closing remarks. <laughs> and to top it off, yours truly was going to moderate the panel with the cast and creative team. This was one of the most amazing moments of my career that almost didn't happen. Thanks to a flare-up of a little something known as the imposter syndrome, would you believe I actually tried to get out of moderating? True story. <laughs> I suggested that we get a celebrity because I didn't feel adequate or worthy to share a stage with these A-list celebrities, despite the fact that I had moderated several panels before, including one for a Hidden Figures event just days prior. Fortunately, my colleagues insisted that I was the best person for this job. So in this instance, the, the imposter syndrome did not prevail. However, there was a time in my life where it seemed to control everything. For me, imposter syndrome first struck and was its most severe when I was a graduate student at Harvard. I was making this transition from being this rock star chemistry major at a historically black college in Atlanta, going to, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> going to a hardcore biology program at an Ivy League institution in New England. So this transition was hard both culturally and academically. I became a different person. I even changed the way I dressed because I thought people wouldn't take me serious as a scientist if I looked like a girly girl. Formerly this outgoing and friendly person, I morphed into this individual that was afraid to, to talk in class. I was so afraid to say something silly or make a mistake because in my mind, I thought that would confirm what everybody else around me probably already suspected, that as a woman, and as a person of color, I wasn't supposed to be good at science anyway. So I walked around with this paralyzing fear of being exposed. What if Harvard figures out that they made a mistake? And what if somebody finds out that I don't deserve to be here? So this took a great toll on me, and I became a shadow of my former self. So after just one semester, I decided that I was going to take a break and take a step back. So I left Harvard and moved to Los Angeles, went, left on a leave of absence and moved to Los Angeles for this transformative 18 months where I worked as an educator in an underserved community and even an actress in TV and film. <laughs> so over time, <laughs> I decided that I was going to go back and finish what I had started. And yes, when I got back, it was even harder the second time. But I was determined to not quit. And through a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, I eventually got those imposter feelings under control. And in 2011, I graduated with my PhD. <laughs> so 
So I'm very transparent about my experiences with the imposter syndrome. And the more I talk about it, the more I realize that I am not alone. And there are actually some really successful, and pe successful people who come across as very confident that also struggle with this. So a question that I'm often asked is, how did you do it? How were you eventually able to beat this? So this is what I'm going to spend just a few minutes to sharing with you all today, especially for anybody here who's currently dealing with this. This is my own personal journey and prescription for overcoming extreme self-doubt. First and foremost, you must understand this is not a passive process, nor will you be cured overnight. And the first thing you have to learn to do is to silence what I like to call our inner hater or negative thoughts. So don't entertain thoughts, don't let them spiral out of control. Your level of your thinking is the first place to, com to combat imposter syndrome. Next, understand that it is okay to ask for help or to admit if you don't know something or you don't understand. That's why they're called training programs. You're there to learn. And even as a working professional, it's still okay. <laughs> so don't be afraid to ask for help. I have no shame in admitting that I actually had to get tutors in graduate school. Me, this former superstar chemistry major, now had to ask for help, but I had to do whatever it took to get through this. Next, make sure that you make time to do things that feed your soul or that you feel good at. Maybe it's a hobby or maybe it's an extracurricular activity. For me, it was motivational speaking and mentoring. So I made sure that I made time to talk to students, if it was undergraduates or even students as young as middle school age kids. I also became a mentor for the summer undergraduate research program, and I also worked as a recruiter for Harvard. So these activities were so instrumental in helping me to regain my confidence. Secondly, learn how to project confidence even if you don't feel it. Fake it, not just until you make it. Fake it until you become it. There is a great TED Talk by social psychologist Amy Cuddy that talks about the importance of body language and power posing and how the, this can impact us. So learn what confidence cues are and then project them. I actually would practice giving talks in front of a mirror sometimes. It's a little weird at first, but I'm telling you, it was so helpful in the end. Now, this next point might seem like a no-brainer, but pr preparation really is key. So instead of wasting your imagination and your creativity on worrying or agonizing over going to class or giving a talk, instead, focus that energy on solutions and not the problem. Be as prepared as you can possibly be. The more prepared you are, the more confident you will feel. Thirdly, Learn how to define your own metrics for success. I got a really critical piece of advice just before I was about to defend my dissertation. A postdoc in my lab said to me, Natoki, you have got to get out of this habit of comparing yourself to other people. The only person you should compare yourself to is you. If you can look at where you are today versus where you were six months or a year ago, and if you see progress, that's all that matters. I was like, first of all, where were you when I was a first year grad student the first time seven years ago, okay? <laughs> I needed that advice then. <laughs> but I can honestly say in all seriousness that the moment I committed to this idea of not comparing myself to others, this has liberated me from so much unnecessary stress and anxiety. Also, don't be afraid to challenge yourself or do things that scare you. <laughs> By challenging ourselves, this will not only help promote personal and professional growth, but the more you get in the habit of facing fear head on, this is how you begin to diminish the power that it has over you overall. So don't be afraid to do things that scare you. So with everything that I have just said, these were all lessons that I had to learn as a graduate student but I am still very much applying these to my life today as a working professional. This is a lifelong process. 
And yes, you may even, after you see progress, you might experience an imposter flare-up, and that's okay. So this brings me back to the Hidden Figures event. Imagine if the imposter syndrome would have won out in this instance. I would have not only robbed myself of this amazing opportunity to moderate this panel, but little did I know, I would have also missed out on this chance to introduce the cast and creative team to the president and the first lady, which was only given to me because I had moderated this panel. And contrary to what you might think, just because you work in the White House does not mean you get to meet the president all the time or will ever get to see him for that matter. So this was a really, really incredible moment for me. So my hope for each and every one of us here today is that we can learn how to silence that inner hater and embrace our potential so we can unlock it and operate at the highest possible levels and be the absolute best versions of ourselves. This is important, not just for us as individuals, but for us collectively and for the greater good of society. And for us in this room here in particular, it's even more important because diversity is such a key driver of innovation. And the future of this country and this world will literally depend on whether or not people who look like us have their ideas represented when it comes to making discoveries and developing solutions to some of our most pressing challenges. Thank you.